Hi, I'm Wendy, and um, today I'm going to talk about qualia and consciousness. Um, most of this information comes from Chapter 12 of the Ramachandran book, Phantoms in the Brain. Um, qualia itself is defined as the internal and subjective component of sense perceptions arising from stimulation of the senses by phenomena. It is both a philosophical and um, a psychological concept. Um, when we talk about perception, we have an understanding of what the senses are sensing on a physiological level, but perception itself is inherently private. Um, we can generalize about the state of the brain and the cortical, cortical functions and connections, but um, when it comes down to it, we can't convey exactly what we are sensing to other people. Um, Ramachandran calls this an epistemological barrier. Um, and in the book, he gives two thought experiments, um, talking about a scientist that has damage to his cones, um, his color perception, um, everything is flat and gray. Um, and no matter how well that scientist understands the concept of how we perceive and sense color, he will never have the experience of sensing color. Um, he also gives an example of talking about the electroreception of fish. Um, and how we can understand, again, the physiological premise behind electroreception, but without those sense apparatuses, we will never be able to experience that. And he talks about um, overcoming this barrier by connecting um, neural cables directly into one another's brains to transmit those senses, um, but that's not a capability we have now. Um, when talking about qualia, uh, Ramachandran um, defines three laws of qualia, kind of borrowing from Newton. Um, the first law of qualia that he talks about is that qualia are irrevocable. Um, once you recognize that qualia, it's impossible to not recognize it in future. And there's the example of the famous Gestalt Dalmatian, um, where once you see the dog out of those spots, you can't unsee the dog. Um, and in fact, the neurons in your brain have forever altered themselves to recognize the dog in that pattern. Um, the second law of qualia is the luxury of choice. The interpretations um, of the qualia and the behavior based on that sensation of the qualia is open-ended. There are infinite number of possibilities. And um, in the presentation, I... Um, show a picture of a banana. So when you look at a banana, you can think about all the different associations that the banana has. It's color yellow, it's if you like bananas, you don't like bananas, or maybe it's a funny picture of a monkey holding a banana that you've seen, but the output of qualia is flexible, whereas when we talk about irrevoc irrevocable, <laughs> the irrevocable aspect of it, um, that is fixed. Um, the third law of qualia is that it involves working memory. The brain has to hold the qualia in a, the quali in an immediate buffer um, and it has to hold it long enough for you to work with it, for you to make decisions based on it. And that suggests that um, qualia is involved in decision making, that our interpretation of our sensations has an impact on our choices. Um, whereas if you can craft that with the zombie system, that is a system that functions in real time um, and is immediate. If you change the, the conditions by which people can insert the letter into the slot, they can't do it um, in the same way that they had previously been able to. So those are the three laws of qualia. Um, there are, you know, disorders that are associated with disordered qualia, um, such as Charles Binet syndrome that we've talked about, um, synesthesia, um, schizophrenia, and um, seizures, epilepsy, a special temporal lobe epilepsy, and the observed changes to personality um, and sensation, and also just the the ephemeral nature of seizures where we have sense perceptions or sight perceptions um, involved. Um, so when talking about generation of qualia in our brains, um, there is not a lot of consensus on how that functions. Um, Roger Orpwood is a scientist in the UK um, that has posited a hypothesis um, of how our uh, qualia is generated in localized cor cortical networks through reentrant feedback. Um, and when he's talking about reentrant feedback, is it's you know it's the sensation input that we have that um, is gen is you know processed in those cortical regions associated with that sensory processing. Um, and he talks about 
um, the information coming in and being refed through the cortical network until it becomes a representation of itself um, instead of just the raw input. Um, and there's a really cool diagram showing how it goes from um, just an input to a, the system saying, okay, what is this like? What does this resemble? And also, what does this mean to us? Um, and when he talks about the microarchitecture of the brain and the cortical networks um, with his theory, there are um, two sort of areas that fit his criteria, which is the pyramidal cells in cortical layers two, three, and five. Um, so um, he hypothesized that repeated recognition in the cortical network of his own representations lead um, from identification to experience, and that is how we arrive at a conscious experience of phenomena. Um, so when you're talking about qualia, you're talking about um, the fact that our consciousness is inherently private, that no matter how good we are at conveying and understanding physiologically how we sense the world around us, um, that is an inherently subjective um, experience. And until we have the neural cable concept that Ramachandran proposed, um, we don't have a lot of ways to directly transmit our experience to others.